don't even know what to say. It doesn't matter. We're just going to make it up. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to you. Cheers, Cheers, everyone. How are you, creative bitches? Welcome to <laughs> Creative Happy Hour. Where we get drunk. On the creative possibilities. And we have not been drinking yet at all. Zero. 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 So today. We don't even know what this shit tastes like. We. What are we calling it? We're calling it the summer sequel? The summer sequel. It's the summer sequel. Yes. We will tell you all about it. And um, and it's got the main ingredient is thyme. Thyme. Huh, get it? Thyme. Yeah. We're gonna make some dad jokes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's two kinds of thyme. T T H Y M E and T I M E. M E. That's it. Yeah. We'll tell you why we did this because we're talking about kind of the second act. Yes. In life, we all have that moment after a failure or after a season in our life where we try to start over, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about how to do that in a creative way. How to or start over if yeah. you have a dead end creative project and For you need sure. to reinvent it. Exactly. So it's all about reinvention, starting over, starting yes. a new sequel, and we'll tell you why yes. a sequel is such a good thing. And uh, that's it. <laughs> Try this wonderful libation. Yay, cheers to cheers. you. Okay, cheers. Here we go. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow, that is tasty. That's delicious. That's interesting. Hey, it almost feels healthy, like an apple a day keeps yeah. the like, you know, doctor away, the psychiatrist away. <laughs> so how do we make this, you ask? Fine, you should ask. We made this with Old Hollywood. It's a distilled brandy that's actually made from... Grapes. Grapes in Napa Valley. And uh, it's got a scandalous blend of botanicals. Ooh. And it's called Summer Sequel, Old Hollywood. Um, and so we thought that was great because a sequel is kind of, a, it's the second part of something where you get to learn much more about the characters. Yeah, you get to go a little deeper. You get to go into deeper into the story. story. Yeah. Yes. And we thought that that had a lot to do with reinventing yourself after, you know, a chapter. Mm -hmm. And there's so many ways of doing this. We were inspired by a TV show that is coming out soon on MSNBC. Yes. We're going to plug ourselves in that. We're hoping maybe we get some of that attention. People yeah. can look it up and find us by accident. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a good part about reinvention. <laughs> <laughs> it's called, the new show is called Back in the Game. Back in the Game. That's yeah. what you got to be. Back in the Game. Back in the Cheers to get back in the Game. Back in the Game. Yeah. Exactly. So it's um, all these different people who had a big career, especially in Hollywood or in sports or in any kind of entertainment. Yeah. Where it's a short-lived career. It's a short-lived career. You had some success, and yeah. then all of a sudden you're like, what do I do with myself for the yeah. second part? And I think that that applies to a lot of creatives. You know, whether you have this successful career or whether yeah. you stopped for a minute to have some kids. I mean, we just spoke to a ballet dancer, mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. she had a, you know, a ballet career as a yes. professional dancer. Mm -hmm. And then we met with her yes. recently kind of about... What's next? What's what am, next? What am I yes. going to do? Exactly. And we thought if she's asking us, like, I can't believe anybody trusts us with our opinion, but <laughs> yeah, um, we're like, absolutely, we can tell you that. Yeah. And she came away very inspired. Mm -hmm. So we compiled this list of pieces of advice that we yeah. gave her. And we actually thought about them even more, and maybe there are less drinks involved this time. But <laughs> um, but we decided that the other ingredient is time. And yes. we think that that is really important because we think one of the main steps in coming up with your second mm -hmm. act is giving yourself the time and space to do it. Be kind yeah. with yourself. So before yeah. we launch into the whole thing, think yeah. you need to be Don't a Don't think bit. like, oh, I have to reinvent myself by next week. Yes. I mean, you can. You can. Well, that, yeah. And that's yeah. actually kind of a good thing. So, well, one of the first things is that they say that, you know, if you're, you know, you're creative, right? You're going to approach this yeah. in a creative way and we're going to give you a bunch of that advice. But one of the things they say is to decide whether really a change is warranted, like re whether you really yeah. actually want to launch into something new. Yeah. Some people are ready for a break and they want to have that time. Right. And then they feel guilty. Right. Right. Like that's really terrible. I think a lot of people will run from one thing to another. Right. Yeah. Or some kind of thing will pop up. I mean, I remember when I was working in the dental field and mm -hmm. then my brother kept approaching me to work for his company and yeah. I was like, I don't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and he just kept pursuing it. And I was like, okay, well, I'll try it. And then you tried it. Well, see, and that's the cool thing. Once you pull the trigger, yeah. then you have to launch yourself into it yeah. wholeheartedly. That's a really important thing. Because yeah. so many people sit there and they overthink, thinking, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing wrong with thinking, especially when it goes with drinking. Drinking and but thinking drinking and, and drinking. drinking. And that's what we do. Mm -hmm. But um, but I think it is important to really reflect on mm -hmm. whether it's the right time. Yeah. 
whether this is really something that you want to do or whether you're being guilted into doing it. Right. Because so many people, like moms who, you know, their kids are a certain age and they're told, oh, now you're going to go into the workforce. You're getting a job. Or yeah. You're... And for some people, that's really the right thing. Well, yeah. And some people, they have no choice. And I mean, I have, have a no good choice. friend, you mm -hmm. know, she just went through a divorce with two small kids mm -hmm. and her husband absolutely convinced her that you know, he didn't want her to work. He wanted her to that stay home. Ever, yeah. So she gave up, you know, she had more education than him, mm -hmm. which wasn't hard to do because. <laughs> he Hope he's whatever. watching this. Oh, yeah. I doubt it, but yeah. um, I uh, wish. He, he can't understand he's the big words He's not my use. favorite person <laughs> on the planet. I'll just put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he kept encouraging her not to work. And my mantra to her was get work, a job, get a job, get a job. Get because she had been out of the workforce for yes. so long. Yes. So it was very challenging. She kept getting rejected, you oh, know, yeah. rejections from these positions that were like, well, what, what have you What's done? What's your experience? And, and we'll talk about that a little bit later yeah. because um, just a new way of looking at your life experience mm -hmm. as actual work experience. And we'll talk, that, that's a huge point actually. Yeah. But I think that with a lot of artists who are trying to start over, so many people tell them not to sell out and not to jump into the like typical right. workforce. Mm -hmm. It's like some artists that I know were artists and they were creating and they were doing okay. They were successful enough. And then they get offered like this corporate job. Right. And when they take it, their artist friends are like, oh my God, you sold out. Like, what mm. are you doing? You suck. You failed. You know, and it's oh, like, no, yeah. I'm making a lot the of fucking money. The fact that I can pay my rent <laughs> now yeah. uh, such means a I sold such out. A yeah. Yeah. What a loser. So, what a loser I am. Yeah. So, that's You're not something borrowing where... money from your parents anymore. Uh, I mean, uh, dumbass. Wow. Like, wow. How can you do that? So, yeah. So, decide if you want to change and decide yeah. how you want to change. I mean, that's yeah. up to you and you only. We're just starting to talk about what people tell you mm -hmm. and how like nobody is nobody's business but your own right you know like you don't this is not a time when you want to hear all the bullshit but but getting a mentor yeah getting a mentor someone amazing. someone mm -hmm. that perhaps has gone through a similar type of situation totally. maybe mm -hmm. not i mean it's never going to be exact but no, no maybe someone who's gone through a change and they can say oh yeah that's normal that you yes. feel that way mm -hmm. or it's normal for it to not work so smoothly totally. during the beginning you know whatever it is that absolutely would be typical well yeah and i love what you said about telling you you know it's normal to go through this and so many people when they look for a mentor they're going <laughs> to look for somebody who's like up here yeah and they're going to look for somebody who's like super impressive and who's done it all before like right. times a million and actually they say that the best mentors are not the people who mm. are these massive ceos of the fortune 500 company it's the person who's just a couple steps beyond you so it's somebody right. that you can admire because who they just done recently it. went through it. Yes. Yeah. Somebody who they can still remember and relate to it. Yes, because it's so easy to get out of touch when you're right. up here and we get right. it. There's nothing wrong with that, but right. that doesn't give you that helpful advice. Right. So I think that that's a really really cool thing. So here's another really interesting. And so speaking of which, actually, of like where that person is in life, mm -hmm. one of the things that people have a hard time doing when they're making changes is accepting where they are. Mm. You know, like accept. I can where relate are, to that. Right? I have a hard time accepting where I am. Totally right. We all yeah. do sometimes. Like, why are we here? I'm what like, is going on? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll be like, you know, at mm -hmm. work and I'll be like, what? why am I here? It's like that Talking head song. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what am I Where is my wife? Where right? is my mansion? Exactly. Where, yes. is my... where is my fabulous whatever? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's. Yeah, it is. Sometimes what we feel like. But I but, think that that's an important step, right? In embracing the change and in moving towards it. But is... you have to have reality talks with yourself. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you work on the things that you're working on. Yes. And then you say, you know, yes, it's important to keep a roof over my head. Yes, mm -hmm. it's important to put food on the table. Yes. Yeah, you know, all these things, you know, those are all the things that I'm accomplishing by doing that job. Right, right you now. have to embrace why you did the things you did. Yeah, and then you, mm -hmm. you know, you continue to have your goals, work on your goals, but totally. yeah, it's it's very easy to be, to get to a place where you're mm -hmm. judging yourself. And yeah, like, and that's not helpful. Like, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm getting older and I didn't yes. do, you know, I haven't accomplished these. Right, and I think beating yourself up is not worth it. I think that instead of beating yourself up, you, you should just lie to yourself. <laughs> yeah, you should lie to yourself all day long. That's what we do. Denial, <laughs> denial, denial. No, what you, you should be honest with yourself, but you should embrace the things where you feel that you had some right. failures and some shortcomings yeah. and see which things you actually need to change. Mm -hmm. Like see where you really went wrong, like what mm -hmm. created some kind of a failure mm -hmm. or the situation that you don't like. But also so many things that got you here are learning opportunities. There are mm -hmm. things that have shaped you in a really positive way. 
you know, the shit that you went through along the way. I mean, God, if that doesn't help where we are now, you know, that would really blow. So you can definitely take those lemons or those rotten apples and make them into apple cider. Mm -hmm. make them into this and then make them into a cocktail. And make them into a oh. cocktail. And it's so wonderful. And you can never mm -hmm. assume also, you know, we don't know what the future holds. No, I mean, we don't. We did our episode on change. Yeah. Where we're saying the only thing that is sure is change. You know, right. we don't know what the future holds. You can only try to line yourself up. Right. So that you can be as successful as possible, but things will change. So you do need to be flexible and resilient and embrace that, you know, and through all of this, keep in mind that you need to realize that even though we're giving you all these wonderful tips, you might still fail. Yeah. And that's fine that's too. I do it all the time. Doesn't mean we were wrong. No. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't mean that we failed doesn't too. mean that we failed you're we, the failure you're the this, loser <laughs> in this equation <laughs> right no no um, we're kidding we're, we're kidding no you might fail and that's a thing it's okay we'll make you a drink and we'll start over have a drink and start over we'll start over maybe have two it's fine watch it's your fine. face girl Oh God, girl, watch your face. We trashed her so bad. Oh, if you guys haven't watched nice actually way. our Rachel Hollis episode mm. where we trash her, you might want to have a stiff drink and uh, check that out. Cause well, I mean, all we do is illuminate her. We don't trash anyone. We, oh, you're so right. We don't. We illuminate. Reframe. Reframe we, the issue. We don't yeah. trash. We illuminate. We illuminate. We we yeah we did we dissected. We are illuminators. We are illumin. We are so illuminated. We're yeah. the Illuminati. That's okay. <laughs> um, so yeah. So I love that when you say accept where you are mm. and kind of take you know take 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 the you know see what that the, does not mean give up. People. It doesn't mean give up. So you told me that story about Matisse. Oh yeah. So Matisse. It was at this point in his life where he couldn't hold a paintbrush anymore. I don't know, it was his like, illness drink, and his age. Drinking, and drinking. Too many absinthe <laughs> yes, cocktails, too exactly. many green fairies, mm -hmm. and he couldn't hold a tooth a toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> she's been at work <laughs> yeah, and sucking work. spit, and she's like, toothbrush? No. Paintbrush. You couldn't paintbrush. hold a paintbrush anymore. <laughs> but what he realized is he could hold scissors. Which so, is really weird. I would think yeah. that if I didn't have the coordination, a paintbrush can do less damage than scissors. But whatever. Yeah, but he made some nice... He made it work. He did yeah. those cutouts. They so he did cool. those cutouts, and mm -hmm. that was one of the highlights of his career, actually. Totally. We've all Talk seen Talk about them. reinventing yourself. Right? That's pretty great. Yeah. Like, that's such a... Fun. Well, it, like that artist we were talking about who spilled her coffee, and she's oh, doing yeah. all that coffee art. She was like, ooh, art. these are paintings. Ooh, paintings on my table. Yeah, speaking Instagram. of that, I poured a whole mug of coffee on myself oh, in my bed this morning. Oh, shit. I was like, oh, no, oh, no. You it's should have like taken a picture, put it on Instagram. I know. Like, like, you like, are. Look at the painting. <laughs> <laughs> wabi sabi. Um, <laughs> I call it wabi sabi. Wabi sabi coffee. Wabi bobby. Wabi, wabi betty. betty. Wabi betty. Wobbly betty. Wetty betty. Wetty betty. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think so. Then when you've decided to change, mm -hmm. don't wait anymore. Like, mm -hmm. you need to start acting. And we talked about. Get your about, ass right. Up get and your do ass it. in gear. And we talked about that, about yeah. how to actually do things and how to, you yeah. know, and the thing is really, we always joke about this one with her five second rule, Mel oh, Robbins, yeah. five second Poor rule, thing. but it's true. Like yeah. get started, do it. Go. And then at that point, go, go, go. Don't give up. Like don't yeah. let anybody tell you. Yeah. And again, you were telling me about the Jennifer Lawrence story. Oh yeah. So she was, it she was, was her first le auditioning for her first leading role. In Winter's Bone. In Winter's Bone. Mm -hmm. And so she goes to the audition in LA and. Looking all pretty. Looking all Trying cute. to do her best. Doing yeah. her best. Sometimes doing your best is not the best. Yeah. And so she shows up and the director was like, mm, You're too cute. You're too much of a starlet. You're mm -hmm. not you're not made for this role. So what did she do? She the audition was then in New York the next yeah. day. She got on a plane and she flew to New York. Red she got her looking like shit. Yeah. Got <laughs> messed up her hair, got some ugly ass clothes. You just know, probably rubbed some dirt on her face, looked like yeah. a rumpled little mess. Went in and auditioned again and got, got the it. lead role. Right? So there, there you, go. you go. So don't give up. And sometimes when you're being rejected for something that you're doing, maybe you're doing it too well or maybe you're doing it too clean or maybe yeah. you're not taking the artistic risks. So, yeah. you know, we're trying to put this in a creative point of view. Sure. Sometimes when you do something, maybe you haven't freed yourself up enough mm -hmm. to really make that next chapter soar. Yeah, I think that part of the advantage of starting over is that you've laid the foundation, but now how can you go further? And you were telling me that one of the secrets was abandon that first idea. Isn't that a yeah? Is abandon Steve Jobs the yeah. Thing? It's kind of steep. Yeah, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and kind of abandon it, and then um, you'll come up with something more elegant and more streamlined. Yeah, that's not necessarily the toughest solution. Yeah, the, but you, it's something that's maybe more free. Yeah, usually, I mean, what he was saying is that the first solution is really like complex yes. and complicated, mm -hmm. and then think, if you think just, Jennifer Lawrence's makeup and hair. Yeah, and that was a lot of work and a lot of Botox yes. and a lot of yeah. 
a lot of workouts. And and she just made it simple. Yeah. Streamlined it. Yeah. <laughs> didn't brush her hair. Didn't brush didn't her teeth. Didn't brush her teeth. <laughs> Yes, Maybe. and then it worked. Yeah, and there you go. So she I, did not girl wash her face. She did not girl wash her face, and girl she did, don't wash your girl, face. Don't wash your face. So I think that that's yeah. really cool to to take the actions and also take that experience that you have. Like we're mm. the people we're talking to. We know that all of you watching us are oldies. Um, in general, oldies we've we've seen goodies. yeah we oldies but goodies. We've seen the analytics. We yeah. know what well, we know is what. You probably have some experience behind you and, you know, that is really valuable. Like yeah. you, you know, you've kind of streamlined your learning mm -hmm. or you've streamlined that whole thing. And that's something else. So, so many people, especially we're thinking of women who've not been in the workforce right. and who now have to go back and they get smacked in the face over and over and over again. Yeah. This happened to your friend after her divorce that she oh, was, yeah. you know, rejected a bunch of times. Yeah. But often you just don't think that you have the experience and you undersell yourself a lot. Yeah. And I think that that's a real handicap when you're like, right. oh, I don't have this. Think about the things that you did do in like life experience right. or an experience that can be carried over to the new thing you want to do. Right. And I'll bet you that there's a lot of I that. mean, running a household, I mean, not that I really yeah. do it because I'm at, Choices. I'm at work <laughs> all the time. But but I imagine, you know, like if you have multiple kids and mm -hmm. a husband and you're, you, you know. You be a CEO. I mean, you're really like, you're managing like a oh, small yeah. company. Oh, you're a C-level executive. Yeah. I mean, for sure. Absolutely. You're organizing like, everybody's schedule. You are. Like you could definitely be an administrative assistant yes. minimum like yeah. that you could jump into that job immediately and then you were telling your friend like I don't care get a job well my so, mantra was get a job I don't care if it's a freaking grocery store I, I absolutely was like, but I was like get yourself out there yes break this storyline yes that says yes. that you can't get a job break Just the break obstacle this and exactly. she did she got a job actually because she was a swimmer in college she got mm -hmm. in a water polo player she mm -hmm. she got a job coaching uh swim Perfect. See? And, you know, it didn't and pay anything. It doesn't matter. It gets you out there and it gets you to stop with that whole story. So she that started meeting yourself. people. And, mm -hmm. and I think one of the, the people that she met in that process actually is was one of the ultimate connections. So now she does have a really good job. And, and it, I think it was one of the people through that whole process that she met. I love it. I in love order it. to get this other job. So, yeah. And, and um, honestly, seniority means pretty little you know, in terms of how you're gonna be compensated and what kind of a job you're gonna get. Like, I know so many people who are like, oh, well, I started this company and I've been there forever, and then this person comes in and they're now getting paid more, yeah. and they're new. It's like, well, that's just, that's attitude, that's mm -hmm. what you can deliver. And then some other people come in and they've got, you know, all of these things that they'll be like, oh, well, these people who've been here for 20 years and still wear they still have better parking spots. It's like, well, bitch, do you want the parking spot or do you want a, the job? So see what's really important yeah. to you and decide. And yeah, make, don't get that caught choice. up in details no. that don't really matter. Totally. I mean, that's totally. just... Exactly. And then you can also, you always say that you can use obstacles as opportunities. Yeah. And that's that was one of the other things about reinventing yourself. So mm -hmm. when you're in a situation where... You know, and this is what this is what creatives do is yes, they all the time. They Absolutely. figure out strategies, solutions, to, connections, yeah, they use, whatever. They uh -huh. use situations that seem, you know, to be obstacles or totally and they make them opportunities. Exactly. You know, creatively. And, 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 and creatively they make them opportunities. So either that's you know, either that's gonna be reframing of what it is that you're going for mm -hmm. or doing is this where we can fit in that story about what is it the it's not a weeble wobble what is it a wiggly, oh, the wiggly, wiggly wobble. Giggly. Wiggly. so the, these guys invented this this ball that when you roll yeah, it on the, the ground it rolls around and light, I think it lights up and it mm -hmm. laughs it giggles and Sounds so, awesome. And it was a kid's toy. That's the way they <laughs> designed it to be a, a stoner kid's toy. toy. It could be yeah, a stoner, stoner toy. toy. Right. I mean, I'm sure lots of stoners play with that ball. They'd be like, oh They giggly God. wiggly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they, um, so they go to the trade show, and there's this big trade show, and they were supposed to be in the kid's toy section, mm -hmm. but they ended up getting their booth in the dog toy section. Right. So instead of, like, getting upset mm -hmm. and saying, we're supposed to be in the kid's toy section, they were like, I guess this is a dog toy. I guess this is a dog toy, and we're going to push the shit out of it. we're going to push the shit out of it as a dog toy. Because we have this audience, and because we know how to create the product, yeah. making the jump to this other application yeah. is not hard. You were also telling me about your brother who was doing the farm wood, and that's a very specific Yeah, so realm. we were doing, yeah, mm -hmm. so we were selling reclaimed farm wood, and, and, and there was a period of time where it was extremely popular, and mm -hmm. then it, you know. Trendy, then, trendy, trendy. And, you need to be then, careful with that. You need to have your eye on that. And it started to, you know, kind of fade a little mm -hmm. bit, and or a lot. 
And, um, and one of the things that I would always say is, well, we already have a platform. We already, yes. we already have a business. We have a business mm -hmm. license. We have a showroom. Why don't we sell something else in the design yeah. world? Or why yes. don't we break into another you kind of business? You could have done anything, like artisanal yeah. fabrics from grandmothers in Ohio or whatever. Like yeah. You could have come up with a million things. There could have been all kinds of things. I mean, like, use, yeah, that, yeah, absolutely. Like, it, it could have been, you know, and, you know, I didn't exactly know what it was, but, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not open to it, you're not open to it. Totally. But, but, but if just, you already yeah. have a platform for something, exactly, you're already in a position. Right. You already have an audience. You already have a website. Yes. Why not offer Absolutely. another, you know, option another for your option. clientele Completely. that maybe is in the same genre? Yes. So, like, if you're a musician and you're known for piano or whatever, like, nobody's stopping you from launching into vocals or whatever. The yeah. worst thing that's going to happen is you suck and then yeah. you'll just scale back to piano, but that whole platform doesn't change. Right. And if you're a painter and you're going and to That's exactly what here, I mean. Right. If you're that's a exactly and you go into saying. paper cuts, once you once <laughs> right. you finish playing with scissors, you can go back to something else or be right. doing finger painting or whatever the hell yeah. you wanted to do. Yeah. But I think that that's a really interesting yeah. thing. Like that's another part that of the fact that you've built your experience in your platform already. So like see that you have that. Well and, and people do it all the time. Zero. I mean all there's the time. Yeah. I mean yeah. what what company was thinking, oh like, you know, I, I've talked about modern times beer. You know, mm -hmm. modern times yes. they you know, then they, they started offering modern times coffee. And so yes. then they had a cafe and you well, know for they the hungover people once they've drunk yeah. their beer. They, they and like it fit together. Date, and daytime nighttime. Yeah. I mean that's another thing. Like think of the platform that you have and how can I expand mm -hmm. this? I mean, the number of bands who don't make any money from booking shows, but that they make money off of merchandise. Yeah. Like, that's an incredible thing. And yeah. that is something to look at. And just that extends to what you do as you reinvent yourself. Yeah. Think about avenues for success. Think right. about avenues for expression. Yeah. And, and also, so many times when you see this obstacle, mm -hmm. if it's an insurmountable obstacle, mm -hmm. often it's not, first of all. But if it is, you can figure it out like you know if you're missing the training or you're missing the well, if education you can't go over it go around it either go around it so there are new ways of looking right. at it as steve Jobs said with a more you know simple elegant solution or if you really think like oh it's so important for me to get this degree or this training we'll go get it like don't yeah. stop don't freeze yeah. don't be like i can't do this go and get the freaking training like at least now you know that you need it Right, you know, and that's kind of freeing. Yeah. I think no, that I agree that's with that. awesome. So on that subject, I mean, this scarf is a perfect example. My God, yes, Damon, yes. our very dear friend, Damon, yes, Gray. Mm -hmm. Um, it, he was a ballet dancer, mm -hmm. and well, he is a ballet dancer and yeah. a Pilates instructor. Mm -hmm. But as far as we know, ballet dancers, can, you know, their careers their career pretty short lived. Shot. So he has reinvented himself as a designer, Completely. and now he makes and he's these full on in that persona. Yeah, I and mean, it suits him really well. Yeah. But but I think all of his creative friends that he had as a dancer yeah. are there to support him in totally. what he does. Totally. And all of his hobbies enter into this. So tell yeah, us so about this, what you're wearing. This is um, a silk scarf. And this is it's one of harpy. his... It's, it's the, the, the harpy. Scarf. So it's one of his original drawings. Mm -hmm. There she is. It's beautiful. It's I one of my it. favorites. We're two I harpies. Some people say they're always harpies. Ha yeah, they're he was saying his husband calls him a, scree a screeching harpy. Oops. Yeah, that's like, why we like him. I was like, that's a compliment, baby. That's a, compl that's a compliment. We like. Yeah. Him. So I mean, he has all kinds of designs that he does. I bought one too. Yeah, she bought one too. With, uh, the I'll snake skeleton. It. I will wear it on an yeah. upcoming podcast because it's really cool. But they're all hand drawn, and then they get yeah. they put them on fabric and make them into these beautiful and he's small got a and large. Very detail oriented uh, thing that he does. Like his whole process yeah. is detail oriented, and I think that he gets that from. The ballet with hours oh, and hours yeah. of practice oh, yeah. and perfection and For all sure. of that. Like, you can tell. Oh, you know? you, yeah. And that's Absolutely. amazing. That's a strength that He's he He's all has. into the lines and the angles Completely. and the way mm -hmm. that it comes together and the way that it lays and the whole thing. Yeah, it's... All of it. The attention to detail is amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. We said, you know, find out what it is that you need to do to change. So I mentioned the education. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned, you know, starting on things and not letting things block you. But find out what else it is that you need to do. Some people need to change their schedule. Like we've talked about your right. morning routines and we've talked about... <laughs> that's a pretty funny episode that's too. That's a really funny episode yeah. I have to say. <laughs> we've talked about, you know, habits and, yeah. you know, things that you need to change in yourself. We've yeah. talked 
about all kinds of stuff. We're so freaking useful, you know? I mean, I'm saying... I mean, hello. Okay, the first thing you need to do to reinvent yourself, listen to every single one of our episodes, because yeah. you'll be the hello. better for it. Start be with, yeah. All of it. You'll be so freaking yeah. inspired. Well, actually, you know what? Our very first episode, while not maybe our finest, but it's all about marketing yourself and reinvention. Remember? It's the Rosé. Rosé all day. Yeah, Rosé all day episode. It's the first one. Yeah. I think that's a really cool one to listen to yeah. because a lot of this stuff is there. Yeah. Because it's all about the story that you tell. But definitely, like, what are the obstacles? Like, you know, if you want to be a dancer, like, am I not fit enough? If you want to be an artist, like, do I not have the materials or the space or the education? Like, yeah. what it is, what is it that's stopping me? Or if you want to get an executive job, which, and that's not antithetical to creativity. Like, you can totally get yeah. a corporate job where you use creativity every single day. Yeah, you know? where you increase your income so that you can so that you, you can know, do all the that supplies shit. you want or right? go to the classes you want or whatever. and so that you can you can be associated with individuals right. who have you know the means to enjoy outlets of creativity or to mm -hmm. you know be consuming creative output or you know I mean and I think that anybody who is super successful or most people stop right not everybody most people who are super successful are super creative. Mm -hmm. Even if they're not creative in the artistic sense, but yeah, in the traditional they sense, clearly have to have. I right. mean, some of them are just bullies, um, yeah. But but most of them are very creative and they're super inspiring to listen yeah. to, even if you don't agree with them. Here's another fun thing. So once you've decided you want to change, once you've chosen that thing and you're on that road to yeah. your second act and your change, do not feel the need to justify yourself. Yeah. Like, we know what this is. Like, when you tell people that you have this idea to do... Oh, well, oh, I really... I, I, yeah, like, yeah, I know I should be still staying home with the kids, mm -hmm. even though they're 25. Yeah. I still live at home. I know I'm a bad Because I completely mom. catered to them their yeah. whole freaking life. And they're not... That's not going to fuck them up. <laughs> no, like... Yeah, if you don't make excuses and justify, don't make your, excuses. Yeah, and just it's be hard. like, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do. It, it, and it's so hard because so many people around you... Even if they're well-meaning, they will be like, if you're like, oh, I'm writing a book. Oh, really? I mean, I have my business oh, cards totally. for my publishing company are all with all the shit that people hear from yeah. people when they say that they're a writer. It's like, oh, you, you want to be a writer? Oh, so what are you going to do for money? Or yeah. like, oh, you want to be a writer? Oh, well, my, my brother was a writer and he died in the starvation. <laughs> you know, you're like, okay. So you well, even wanna... with the podcast, I mean, oh people my God. are like, I'm like oh, I got to go. I got to do the podcast. podcast. And they're like, how are you monetizing How that? are you? Yeah. Like, how are you monetizing? That's how they, oh, that's, bitches. that's the first thing that they ask me. rolling in money. I'm like, either. don't call me and borrow money, mm -hmm. bitches. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's so funny. And they're like, every week you do it. Yeah, every, every week. week. That's what it's called. It's called persistence. <laughs> It's gonna pay off, motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> what? Like, what? What am I supposed to do one time? And one then, time. Like, I, I think it's gonna work. I mean, but that unfortunately is the thing that happens to so many people, and unfortunately, so many creatives. Yeah. Well, all these. It's not gonna happen to you because you listen to this episode, right? No, but all of these people who are creatives or entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. the reason so many things fail is because people do not follow through. So if you're going, yeah. Through a change, I mean, give yourself the freaking opportunity yeah. for it to work. Like, it's not going to happen yesterday. It's not. Yeah. You know, it's like, um, yeah, maybe one person that happens to, they're the exception. They're not the rule. And yeah, with anything. Like, yeah. if you're trying to get in shape or lose weight, you can't just diet no. for a week. You can't no. just go to exercise class, uh, uh, exercise <laughs> class three times and think, no. like, oh, you're going to drop I mean, we all wish. Weight. That's what we do. We I mean, that's what we it, do, yeah, but that's not it we know. how it works. Intellectually, we know that yeah. this is not possible. No, it's but, just... I mean, you you have to work at it. You, you have, have to work, have at, to work it. at it. And you have to give yourself the day time. Day after day. And, and you don't need to justify, like, when, when people are like, oh, why aren't you, why can't you do this? Okay, it's good once or twice. You yeah. like, have to shoot the fucking podcast. But after a while, if that same person keeps asking you, be like, why, why? Just be like, hey, you know what? You're actually not being supportive. And yeah. I think that it's important to surround yourself with supportive people. Yeah, for sure. But also people who reflect that change that you want to make. Yeah. So, like, let's say you wanted to quit drinking. <laughs> Don't hang out with us. Like, just stop. <laughs> we'll understand. I mean, but, you know, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, if you want to be a successful artist... Hang out with other successful yeah. artists or hang out with people who buy a bunch of art. I mean, that's cool, too. Yeah. But be strategic about who you hang out with. Like, if you're hanging out with a person who's like, no, come on, stop painting. What's the point hang out with me? That? Yeah. Like, that's really, I mean, it is so easy to take somebody down. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, totally. It really is. Totally. Like, we know this. We yeah. we take people down, but just <laughs> successful people. We don't care. Um, <laughs> but we yeah. illuminate. We illuminate successful people um, who are more successful than we think they should be. 
Speaking of which, can I just voice my pet peeve? Please. That Oprah's book club, uh, still, still Olive, the latest choice that won the Pulitzer Prize. What the actual fuck? I read this book and I was like, this is so depressing. Wait, didn't wait? Didn't they have a movie? Did they? Maybe. Wait, was she the one that like went deaf or something? Maybe she she oh she went incontinent in this book. So wait a minute, wait a minute. She wait. shits her pants repeatedly. It's like an ad for Depends. Wait, it's not where she has like memory loss and she forgets. No, who that's she is. still Alice. Still Alice. That, that was, was a still, great movie. Oh, still Alice. Still cool. was great. Oh, no, no. Okay, because I was like, <laughs> no, no, no. Still, like, is this Man. a play on Still Alice? No, no, no. Still Alice. Okay, is, it's okay. What is it? So bad. It's it's the it's the life of a bunch of people in this town in Maine. And it starts off with this woman who's like on her second husband, blah, blah, blah. But it's just depressing as far. It's basically mm. like end of life illuminated in the worst possible way. So basically it ends up with her almost dead. Basically all her friends Is there die. any retribution in it? A lovely description. Morphine? Any morphine? <laughs> no, morphine. Is there any pain oh, relief? Well, she, yeah, when she has a heart attack, she thinks oh. it's a beautiful thing. She's like, oh my God, I was in a beautiful place. So like, you were dead. She was like, oh, it was so beautiful. Let like, her like, that was a good way to Let end her, the right? book, right? Right? That, that they're like, okay. They go, and she's like, uh, you know, happy Wait, ending. Who recommended this book to you? Oprah and the fucking Pulitzer uh. Prize Committee. Oh no, but the the other book, The Overstory, that I, the, oh, the, that's another yes. Pulitzer Prize. And oh. I was like, what, like, there were all these like phantom sentences. Like this there would was the be same like, way. there it's... would be like a sentence and he would start talking about something and then there was like all this missing narrative and I was like, like wait a minute, am I supposed to fucking guess what your story's about, buddy? Right? I hate that. It and might... then it'd be really, really good and then you'd go off the cliff. I fucking hate it. In because my... there would be nothing there. It'd be like vapid. It's so stupid. In my writing group, And that's I a good people, thing. That's a good thing. thing that people are into I'm because they don't understand it. Not to do that. They don't understand it. So they think it. it's smarter than they yeah. are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't buy that anyway, shit. Anyway, we don't buy it either. So yeah, that's that was just not a, little... a good, it's not working on me. It's a little for them, parenthesis, but yeah. yeah, don't believe the hype. That's a good piece of advice yeah. for when you're trying to reinvent yourself. Yeah. Don't invent, like, the fucking hype and everything that's a trend, this is not a good thing for you to yeah. jump into as a second Don't act. be like, I'm just going to make tie-dye tie tie blockchain. <laughs> tie-dye yeah. blockchain. I'm just, like, <laughs> anybody who, like, it's really funny because yeah. I think that a lot of the trends, that might be not cool, to though. be ageist, but some things are a young person's game because right. they're dumb. Um, <laughs> yeah. They're fucking meaningless. You, you, you didn't no, see that coming, did you? No, but, no, but, but honestly, don't just, don't go like, oh, you know, like a lot of people when I was working with my brother would but approach my brother and they'd be like, ooh, reclaim wood. That's, That's a trend. That's popular. That's, I'm going to do it. Like, yeah. can't put the money in their pockets fast enough. It's yeah. like, no, yeah. it actually is really hard to do and yes. it's not that lucrative. Exactly. Like if you want something lucrative, mm -hmm. like invent an iPhone. Exactly. Invent something that's like exactly. really like, yeah. you know. And, it, and be ready to put in the fucking work. I mean, Steve Jobs, spoiler alert, he died. Uh, you yeah, know, no, like, I mean, that shit gave him cancer because it he was so stressed he out. He was so stressed out. Like, that's, but the thing is with all these people who jump onto trends when they're trying mm -hmm. to reinvent themselves. So, Jalal's cousin who we're going to dinner with and he's not going to watch this, so it's fine. I'm, I'm gambling on this. I love this because I'm always like, so and is not watching this so they're never going to hear the shit I I'm know. saying about We're going to get called out one day. day. We're going to get super called out and if that's what it takes for people to listen to this to be whatever. like, whatever, whatever it is. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Take risks. That's another piece of advice. Yeah. So his cousin jumped on the blockchain thing and he didn't understand it. <sighs> he totally didn't understand it. He's like, this is the new thing. Everybody's making money on this and so he Ooh. jumped on and he took all his money that he'd made at Google. I'm totally like telling you exactly who this is. And uh, he made all this money and he basically gave it away. It, gave it away. Gave it away. It's, and that happens so much. People who jump onto this trend. I know somebody else who jumped into film producing for, you know, alternative media because she thought it was the way forward and she didn't understand it. Well, yeah, and, and so don't over don't yeah. over value don't, don't over invest into that. Yeah, shit, well, for don't sure, like cause... overestimate how smart you think you are. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I made all this money doing this one thing, or I had all this success in this yes. one thing mm -hmm. that I was really good at. It doesn't necessarily translate. No, no, that's so. So just like we were blowing sunshine up your ass and saying all of your talents that you have, yeah, they yeah, translate. They translate. We might they have lied translate. a little bit. They translate to a degree. To a degree. Yes. It is not. It, Don't, yeah. Like it is dad, not tit for tat. It's not. Like my dad who made a lot of, you know, money in business way back in the 1980s when like you, you know, if you were a white male, you know, nobody's throwing money at you fast enough. Like everybody's making tons of money unless they're a dumbass. 
now he's having a hugely hard time. And that's something else that's like radical honesty with yourself is major. But yesterday, um, Gavin was telling us about his company that he works for, and I'm not even gonna say what realm it's in because I don't want him to get in trouble. Gavin was saying that one of his bosses was on the plane and read something about some kind of newfangled shit. And he's like, let's do this. We need to do this. This is gonna be so great. We need to jump in with this company. And Gavin's like, that company is going bankrupt. Like you yeah, did a bad couple, idea. Like you did a couple hours of research on this and you think that you're all new and cool and that this is the new kid on the block. He's like, yeah. no, this is shit. And guess what? 20 people already came up with this and they're already on it. So don't use your energy to throw yourself yeah. into that. Use energy into things that are actually going to help you to get forward. Yeah. And so that's sometimes a hard pill to swallow. to swallow because that's not the sexy shit. You know, no. it's like with your creativity, make it sexy, but the, the foundations are rarely sexy. You yeah. Know? And it's usually not going to happen just because you read some kind no of way. No article way. on mm -mm. a plane no. after a five gin after and tonic. Right. Exactly. That's all. I mean, that shit happens to me all the time. It does. Right? It does. But yeah. I'm, I'm like, like, I got the best idea. I got the idea. best article. Well, well, we posted something. I think we're going to have to repost it on Instagram. <laughs> One of our quotes that was like, oh, think you have a great idea. Wait and see if it survives the hangover. Like, right. It's, you know, sometimes that great idea. Yeah. Talk it over with the mentor that we mentioned. Right. Like your mentor who's just been through this. They're going to be a good person for that little yeah. insanity who's going to say, yes, jump on it. Or And when your mentor tells mm -hmm. you, if you, like, this is why you really need to have a mentor that you admire 100%. If they mm -hmm. tell you to do something, fucking jump on it. That's why people hire, like, fitness coaches. Right. That's why people hire people, you know, nutritionists. Mm -hmm. Because the whole point is they're supposed to tell you what to do and you're supposed to do it. Right. If you don't, it's just noise. I mean, I guess you just have to have the litmus test. Is, mm -hmm. is, it, is it something that's ethical? You know, like mm -hmm. you always have to put it through the lens of like, is this ethical? Is this legally, is it a, is it legal? <laughs> is it legally, you know, appropriate? Yeah. Is it, yes. you know, like there's all kinds of advice that people will give you and it can be unscrupulous, totally. you know, it can be. And so, yeah. So I would say speaking of things like, yeah, is it scrupulous? Is it fair? Write down the tasks that you yeah. need to do. So lists are an amazing thing. Like I'm yeah. a huge list maker. I list. I list. We love lists. We're, we're list makers extraordinary. Yeah. And people who make lists are vastly more you know, yeah. successful. No, I get way more shit done when I do a totally. list. Totally. And you update your list and you yeah. do the shit on your list. But also prioritize the shit on your yeah. list. If you don't prioritize and you're like putting the same weight on everything on your list, that's yeah. dumb. Like you need to figure out what you need to do. Yeah, first. I mean you can't be like flu shot mm -hmm. and then get it like three months after flu season. Right. And also like, right? no. And exactly, like so you're many gonna people. You're going to get the fucking flu, people. Exactly. Well, the equivalent of that is people who are like, let's do all the fun stuff. Let me make really cool business cards. Right. Before you even have seen if there's, you know. That's a really good example. Right? Like yeah. proof of market or proof of concept in yeah. whatever you came up yeah. with you're like you have no product I'm gonna, but yeah i'm gonna make my great business cards and i'm gonna go and so many other people they'll go to you know i mean if events. you want to do that kind of shit do a vision board because yeah, do a vision board. because then that. nobody sees how stupid you are exactly yeah right? just you just, just you. you put it in your unless closet. you put it on your instagram page which oops we did that we did that that's fine we ours was pretty woo -woo. it yeah. was fine <laughs> but yeah i would say like prioritize that shit so many people i know waste a ton of money going to like mm. these industry events mm. that are designed for people who are like 10 steps beyond in right. their career it's like pick out if you're gonna go to some of those things yeah. pick out the right things like i right. would say our podcast for example is right entry level changing lifestyle changing right. product like this is such a great entry level free shit for you to do and you're and so speaking, so do it so do it but speaking of free like don't spend a ton of money on something that you don't know if it's going to either work or if you're right. going to keep doing well, invest it invest in the right things invest in the right things and be really careful because you yeah. can so don't easily, rob peter to pay paul right exactly like it's so easy to kind of be like oh i need to and you'll hear this so many times Oh, you need to invest in yourself. You need to invest in your idea. If you don't yeah. believe in it, you don't invest in How it. How about it's your like, friends that are like, I need to get, you know, I need to go shopping. For, I need to get a new outfit. I need to, to get a new, new outfit. Job. Yeah. I need to dress for the, the job, job that I they want. don't have. I need to they, dress for the job I want. Not only do they <laughs> not have the job, they don't even have the job interview. Exactly. The job doesn't even exist. It doesn't even exist. They have the business cards and they have the outfit and they mm -hmm. don't have the freaking interview. 
I think that's so crazy. You know, I love and, it. I think it's funny. It is funny. But I mean, but that's not saying that you shouldn't be starting to transition right. to dressing for the person you want to be. Sure. Like if you're a soft, like if you're Jennifer Lawrence, <laughs> that's a bad example. Like you yeah. actually should. She was trying to do, she had to do the opposite. It's different. Yeah. That's a very specific example. Yeah. But if you want to be taken seriously, yeah. like you do have to, you know, or if you want to have an identity or if you want right. to have a style, like if you're an artist and you're still dressing like you're on Wall Street, or if you want to get a job, right. you know, and like start to look at how can I make myself be taken more seriously by right. people in the industry that I want to get into. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that that's kind of major. Um, I think that it's important also to follow up regularly on what you've been doing, follow up with the people you've been talking to, mm -hmm. and then kind of reflect on what's working and what's not. Right. You know, starting anew is a new opportunity to not make the same mistakes. You're going to make brand new mistakes. Yay! Yay! But you should at least learn from those mistakes right. more quickly than you did last time because that's the advantage of experience and yes. age. So wonderful. You know, that's major. I agree. Right? I mean, I think, what do you have an example of a mistake that you've made recently that you kind of learned from quickly where you're like, um, oh, I've seen this before? Like, <laughs> um, I don't really make mistakes. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, like, I'm freaking perfect, man. Oh, I love it. And, and you made this drink perfectly, I have to say. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's like... That's experience for you. She just I was like, I don't know, throw this. And she did it, and it's great. Look at the time. Look the at the time. time. Look the, at the time, time is all I have left. It's so good. Time it, is all I have time left. Time is all you have left. So poetic. Right? I mean, time is all we have sometimes, you know? <laughs> I make mistakes all the time. Yeah. I mean, all the time. And I think that making the mistakes is fine because I think it's really important when we are moving into mm -hmm. the second chapter. I think so many times in the first chapter, we wanted to do everything right. Yeah. And I think the second chapter is a really great, you know, ex it's an opportunity to mm. get outside of your comfort zone. And that is really the key to creativity is getting outside of that comfort mm -hmm. zone. Casting a wide net, you know, throwing things at that dartboard and seeing what sticks, what doesn't, and seeing what hits the mark, mm -hmm. what doesn't. You know, I think that that's kind of a... A cool thing that you have somewhat the luxury of doing mm -hmm. and more the experience I think behind you mm -hmm. so that's where you know chapter one was kind of a great thing like maybe it gave you the experience or maybe it gave you the connections or the materials or right. the money you know whatever it was like don't underestimate that mm -hmm. don't think well I'm a loser who's washed up change that whole discourse and be like I have experience yeah you kind of have to change your story I mean I, I don't totally think that have to change yeah your story. The, <laughs> the loser story does not Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't work. I mean, it, it just, it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. And a lot of the things that did work for you before when you were in chapter one, mm -hmm. totally don't work. And so I was watching the previews of this show that's coming up, you know, the, oh yeah, the second act, second act, second base, second, what's it called? Second story? <laughs> second base. The second base. <laughs> it's called Back, back in, in the, the Game. game. <laughs> it's called Back in the Game. Second, second champs. <laughs> Back, I like second base. Revamped. Uh, revamped. Do they it again. Have, they should have revamped this like a bunch of drag queens who are like oh, washed yeah. up. I'm sure they again. already do. Be, shit. Um, but they, I was watching a preview of this show. And? And basically they were showing, I think it was like a Vander Holyfield or something. And they're just like trying to tell them, they're like, listen fucker, that shit that you did before does not work in yeah. this world. Like you need to learn something new. You fucked up because of what you were doing. Like learn to do that. Yeah. You know, and then somebody else, the, the chi Nicole Eggert, I think that's her name, who mm -hmm. was like on Baywatch. Mm -hmm. And then oh. she gained all this weight and she's like, oh, nobody, really? she just let it all slip away. Fine. Not a big deal. But she's beating herself up. Wait, wait, can I get the show on like, yeah, I'll show, I'll, Netflix? I'll, uh, I think it's on MSNBC, so I don't know what we're going to oh. get on. We're going to have to watch some of it. But um, she she felt has this incredible amount of guilt. Oh, about the, fact that the she brownies let, that she ate? I think so. And about the fact that she just kind of let herself slide out mm. of the, you know, the public eye and stuff. And I think that for a lot of creatives, there's that. Where, was she that little blonde? Uh, she's a blonde, yeah. She was a blonde. She's not little anymore. She was, yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. Too she, many cookies. Hey, there's nothing wrong with too many cookies. We're <laughs> into it. Too many. There's no such thing as too many. Let's reframe that. Well, maybe, that. yeah. There's, maybe she needs to, maybe it's not about her weight. Maybe it's more about she needs a creativity. different, <laughs> she, <laughs> she needs a different role. <laughs> role? <laughs> but um bum uh, That's cruel. <laughs> Her second act is going to be as a stand-up comic telling dad jokes. <laughs> As I look how red she is, it's awesome. <laughs> I do make really funny jokes. Right? You do. You make yeah. really good dad jokes. Yeah. Um, but I think that that's <laughs> another thing with so many creatives is that you get you get embarrassed that that you let yourself kind of... Yeah, fail. I do. Right? I mean, I'm totally It's hard. Like when you've... 
when you've not like if you've gotten fired or if you've failed or if you crash and burn in a public way yeah that's one kind of embarrassment but if like it's all on you you know what i mean <laughs> if you just like slowly kind of fade it out oh. it's su- i think that might suck even worse right yeah well yeah because you don't see it happening yeah you don't you, you don't you and just yeah. yeah like maybe you get little glimpses of it and you're like mm-hmm. oh i'm gonna get that under control or oh, i'm totally gonna that out. it's like a diet it's the and same then, thing it's a perfect image for it it's and like, you're like you're like wait a minute my I, pants shrank <laughs> like I'm, I'm starving myself yeah and i weigh more every day like every what day. the fuck is going on here that's why taking stock of what's happening yeah and to make sure you don't fall back into those bad habits right i think that that's crucial well I think you have to evaluate like I think that's where you need to like kind of evaluate psychologically what's going on with you because it's Mm -hmm. like if you're like the Baywatch babe Mm -hmm. and you let that slide Mm -hmm. what do you I mean like what's behind that like what like are you trying to get like you're trying to get away from what uh, like a superficial totally point like what are you you trying to and that's fine and that's a fine story you know i totally i totally you're welcome i totally understand that i mean that's yeah (laughs) that is so what i did that Um, makes so much sense it makes so much sense to me no but i think i I'm just developed her mind and not her ass sick of being judged for my ass it's just like yeah it's like i want people to look at me for my yeah my my eyes are up here you know right here buddy right here (laughs) my brain is up here yeah, <laughs> and you don't look below Just this. Don't it's look not, below the brain. It's, it's not, not attractive. It's not <laughs> a thing to do. No, but seriously, I think that that is a really good point to yeah. look and see why is it that that happened. You know, again, be radically honest with yourself. And you don't need to share this with anyone. No, other you don't than need to go on your t- therapist. Yeah, you like, don't need you to. Don't, yeah. You don't need to go on a TV show and cry to the yeah. whole nation about why you ate the cookies or why. Pop you... a couple lithiums and and have a conversation with somebody that's a professional. A prof- yeah, a professional, or yeah. you know, learn to do it to yourself and it's a lot cheaper but or drink a glass of wine and you know meditate and, and write a, a vision board and, yeah yeah a list write I, mean, a diary I don't know it's like I don't know it all, it all but, sounds good to but me but you yeah. do kind of have to evaluate mm-hmm. you know I think when you're reinventing yourself you kind of have to look at like okay what did and didn't work about yes, my my always. past experience mm-hmm. and why am I changing it right and, and also not just what, what can I leave behind like, I like I that. I what can I leave behind? What can yeah. I dump? What can I stream? It's like when you pack to go on a trip. I do that all the time. And you re dump everything in my suitcase. You you take yes. everything that you want to take and it's unlimited. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, okay, this isn't going to fucking work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not seriously going to wear all this shit. Exactly. And then you go through it and you're like, I don't really need this. I don't really need right. that. I don't really and, need and that. And you know what I'll and do? That, you got to do the repack. Totally. And I, I love this suitcase analogy. I mean, I just, I've yeah. been traveling way too much recently. What I like to do when I pack, so I throw in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. But then I'll sit there with everything sitting in my suitcase that I thought I might want mm-hmm. to wear. And I will do a list of the days that I'm gone mm-hmm. and what is happening on those days. Mm-hmm. So what do I need to do? Because it's so oh, easy to like, I'm way really... more serious than I was thinking. Well, no, but I think it's useful No, too. it is. It is. Like, it's, it's super useful. So I'll write down. So I'm like, okay, Thursday, I'm going to have coffee with this person. Yeah. I'm going to go and go walking and check this stuff out. And then I have a business dinner. Yeah. And then, and then I'm like, okay, who am I seeing? So how, when can I repeat an outfit? Yeah. Some of the stuff that you can simplify. It like, can, yeah. This outfit's great. We cross over. I, I can wear this jacket with this blouse two mm-hmm. different times exactly so what can i combine how can i save myself the effort the energy the money you know yeah and what do i really need so i really need because I, I was like shit i can't fit my shoes in the suitcase what am i right. gonna do and finally i was like you know i really don't need to have the sexy shoes like who's looking at my feet on this trip to new york i mean they could that's a good question if i was meeting with somebody with a foot fetish i would have done something very different right. but i figured that i could wear this one pair of boots with my dresses with my pants yeah with everything and then i just had a pair of sneakers for the for the walking around. and it worked out fine yeah. i mean i didn't regret that i didn't have the pretty shoes and that's another thing that's kind of like with age here's another horrible thing yeah with age nobody's looking at us quite that much yeah we're a little invisible we're a little invisible and let's take that in a good way yeah i mean it's kind of it's like pressures off people pressures off and that that doesn't mean have another fucking cookie it doesn't mean have another drink yeah or it does but but it but it can mean like it can mean you can wear that uniform and nobody's gonna be like oh my god you see what she's wearing and it can mean hey i have a little bit more time to put out this to project. devote to something yeah so i put out this project 
project. More important. And nobody's gonna Ooh, look sorry. if like that I know strength so, made me sleeping. Right. I know Ooh. so many women who are like, oh my god, I don't have time to do this because I have to get my nails done, I have to get my hair done, I have to go and do this and this and that. I'm like, okay, what if you didn't have to do this? And I'm like, who gives? Yeah, a shit? like who's looking at your nails? Nobody's looking at your nails anymore. No. Like that is something. No one's you looking can, at your period. Nobody's so looking at you. You might. And and nobody expects you to be. You're not the next young new thing right so whether you're writing a book or you're acting right. or you're whatever like now people are not looking at the exterior aspects they're not looking at that flash bang they're looking at the substance right and so that's where you, like develop that substance develop that down. well i mean i i think i sent you a picture i'm reading patty smith's book yes. um, year of the monkey and yes. i'm a huge fan of her mm -hmm. i mean i never really got into her music, music yeah i mean not writing, not because yeah. i didn't want to just because i it just, just never came across okay. my yeah. mm -hmm. you know my mm -hmm. my palette but um but I read um, Just Kids, her book about her yes. relationship with Mabel mm -hmm. Lerp. Did you read Just Kids? I've read parts of it, and I have oh, it in my, my God, iPad, queued up, ready to go. fantastic. Mm -hmm. It is such a beautiful story. I, I've been, I've heard nothing but good things it's about it. It's such a great, so and it's... M Train was the book that came after, and that mm -hmm. was so fantastic. And so I was listening, I heard on at, um and PR, I heard her being interviewed. I was like, oh my God, she has a new book. I need this book. So I had yeah. to get the book. Mm -hmm. I literally got the book on Saturday, mm -hmm. and I'm almost done with the book. Amazing. Like, I almost read the entire thing last night because her writing is exactly what you're talking about. Yes. It is all about this, this interior world mm -hmm. of, like, you know, she's constantly interacting with people in these really, like, that's beautiful lyrical right? ways yeah. uh -huh. and it she, her she's writing, a good example like oh my god her writing example, is like saying. a painting her writing is like a painting like, she she makes music i can't get words. it she makes I a can't. painting with it she's i mean yeah she's, and she does all these polaroids of these different places that she I goes love it. she's such an artist like in every she is quintessential amazing. i mean yeah. her writing is so like i was like oh my god i have to get this book it was like like a drug that because I you know I read M Train yeah. I don't even remember when mm -hmm. and I after it was done I was like oh yeah I need more so she's inc she's an incredible example of exactly what we're talking about oh yeah you know her singing career is well it's kind of random because one yeah. of her friends many years ago was you know she was a poet mm -hmm. and her friend was like oh you should be the 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 front woman of a rock and roll band totally yeah she's like you uh -huh. think uh -huh. and then it turns out that she became the front she, woman exactly. of a rock and roll band exactly and on her 69th birthday in san francisco she mm -hmm. played at love the that. Fillmore. love that that's which amazing. is super historic and, yes and and um, but that's amazing like she respects her history she respects where she came from she now is kind of, you know, transitioning into something super deep and cool, and she doesn't try to reclaim what she had. So many people, like Madonna, bless her heart, who... Yeah, she just played in San Francisco, too. I know, but she couldn't be more different. Like, Madonna has still tried she's to... She's holding on, She's too. holding on too hard to that same thing. Like, she's not experienced that... Like, everybody said she was evolving so much as an artist all the time. Maybe, but also too much in the same realm and repetitively. Yeah. And just, like, exploring the same stuff. I just didn't think there was the depth to yeah. it. Patty Smith is a true artist and creative who's like exploring everything she does. You're like, wow, what's she going to do next? It's amazing. Oh my God, mind and blowing. Yeah, and it's mind, mind blowing. And, and she's deep. using a lot of it, you know, to, to do activist work. Yes. I, I, I am super inspired by her. In oh, fact, absolutely. like I'm reading and I was like, I want to be friends with her. I want to hang out with her. I want to have conversations with her. Yes. yes. That's how creatively in in tune her writing is. I, I mean, mean that is I, just I highly so recommend The Year of the Monkey. But like, Patty neither Smith. one of us wants to have a conversation with Madonna, but I think that no. Smith, we can agree. I mean, and I was and a huge Madonna fan when right. I was. Right. Oh, me I was too. Young. I was a huge Madonna, but just because of that one thing. And then you eventually are like, okay, now I'm done with it. Yeah, let's deepen the narrative here. Totally. And, and totally. that's not something that I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe the people that are around her, but I still think she's holding on to that, mm -hmm. that she's commercial her fingernails, like, version. Oh, of, totally. She's remained commercial. And like everything, all the accoutrements that she's tried to add to her persona, like the eye patch. And everything else, like it doesn't translate right, and then she, it's all about the exterior. Like she got yeah. the injections, she got the butt injections, the eye patch. It's all about how she presents herself. Exterior. Yeah, I mean, and I think that that's not working anymore at a certain age. Like that's something where you need to learn. Like I need some substance. I need to evolve the evolution. And, yeah. Yes, yeah. So I think that that's major. Like be that person, no matter what kind of a creative invent endeavor yeah. that you are looking at. Are you going to be the kind of person? Is it going to be the kind of thing that somebody is dying to talk to you about? Oh my god! I seriously, I was test. just like, 
oh my gosh, I want to talk to her. I want to be friends with her. And, yeah. and I was like, that's so weird. She's a famous author. And like, who, you know, and it wasn't like, oh, I want to meet a famous person. No, no, like, no, no. I like, want to have amazing. conversations with people like her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to, you know, and, and I want to like, it, it's just, you got to read. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, you, you, that's a ringing endorsement. It, now it I will completely wanna... heal Good. that experience. The, the wound they, from still yeah, Olive. Yeah. Still Olive. <laughs> it will heal Good. that wound. Good. Because I read, it's... oh, I didn't tell you that I finished City of Girls. Oh yeah. How was that? Hmm. Remember how? Yeah, remember how I loved it. At the it beginning? went like this, and then it really did. Oh no! It's, this is something. So this is another example that illustrates perfectly what we're talking about. This is a book that was going strong, strong, strong. It was awesome. It was you know yeah. rich. It was evocative. It was fantastic. And then it just kept going for too long, oh. and it kept going for too long, and things start going down, and you're like, this is not the book that I signed up for. Right. This is not what it should be like. So sometimes you know. It's time to end the book rather than continuing with the next chapter yeah. of, of the same project. Yeah. You know, and I really felt like the end of that book could have been something, it could have been another book. Yeah. And it, it didn't have any place in it. Like, I just felt like, oh my God, she didn't know where to end and she kept going. So, no where to end. No where to end with you. So, that's the other thing about reinventing yourself and going on to the next sequel. Well, and it's no interesting. No the sequel ends and that you have to jump to yeah, the next Yeah, no, it, film, it's you know? interesting. Is like you do have to know where the end. And, and I've always had this idea of like, oh, I want to do, I want to write a book. I want to yeah. write a book about well, my childhood. Come, come, to, come to me, girl. Yeah, yeah well, of course. Place, so. but, but I always think the thing, the reason, because I read so much, the reason I don't is because, you know, I always think of, the glass castle, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. how she comes from this, you know, experience and then mm -hmm. she's, you know, this really successful mm -hmm. person and, and, you know, anyway, you got to read the glass castle, but, mm -hmm. um, it, like, I always think like, oh, I want to write this. I have all these insights and this experience, but then I don't, in my mind, mm -hmm. I don't have this like perfect, beautiful, like, and that's where you don't jewel listen, right? of an ending, you know. But and that's, that's where you don't. Listen and it's like, to oh, I don't have that because I'm not dead, right? Um, but that's. But, but I, I have this idea in my head that right. there's this like, it's like, okay, yeah. this this happened, this happened, and then it has to be this, otherwise it's not a yes. complete well, triangle. So I always tell people. So I consult with a lot of people who are writing memoirs, and so this yeah. is actually a really interesting um, point to be making in this episode. Is people when they write their memoir. And the people that I will have to kick out of my group every time is the ones that are like, I go, where does your memoir begin? And they're like, when I was born. I'm like, oh, God, no, no, no. Yeah, no. get the fuck I'm out. Like, yeah, get out of my class. Because I'm like, the only memoirs that are successful are the ones that are thematic and that actually tell a story right. and that know where to begin and where to end. You can't say my memoir is about my whole fucking life. No. Because that's not interesting. It needs to be about an obstacle that you faced and then right. moving through something, right. moving through an episode, and then you can do another book about another episode, but right. people want to fit it all into one thing, right. and they need to learn that it's okay to reinvent yourself, reinvent yourself, right. or do next chapter, next chapter, next chapter. I mean, when you're a multi-passionate creative entrepreneur, you can be moving from thing to right. thing, and since it's building on itself, yeah. that's totally fine. You know, it's like the sequels, that's what a sequel is for. For deepening the next thing, well, and that's exploring that's more the stuff beauty that you, of um, yeah. Patty Smith's writing mm -hmm. is that you know, like they're really memoirs of totally, certain like totally. parts of her life. Uh, yeah, and you don't ever get the sense of like beginning, middle, end. No, you get this very fluid experience mm -hmm. of part of a life. Right. And you but get I'm sure totally enough, sucked in. You get sucked in, and I'm sure that there's and enough of a theme, and there, there's there is. enough of a narrative that you. Or, you know, in yeah. there, you plunge in there. And that's what it is. There just has to be meaning to what you do. Yeah. And if you inflect as much meaning as you possibly can, if you really do it well, yeah. like there's going to be that audience and there's going to yeah. be that meaning. There's going to be that, that you know, reward that you're going to yeah. get, whether you succeed, yeah. you know, kind of critically or whether you succeed financially. Right. Like that's going to happen, but you really need to put it in. Well, you I was know? thinking about, I just read The Killing the Commendador by um, oh, yeah, yeah. Haruki Murakami, uh -huh. and, uh -huh. and his books are notorious for being like, oh, these really big psychological, yes. intense, mm -hmm. monumentous experiences where the person goes through this like crazy thing. Mm -hmm. And then they're always very like, you know, um, kind of like the way you're describing. Yes. But it's, but I think culturally that's more acceptable this I get that in the mm -hmm. Japanese culture, whereas yes. like it's very American to have like 
a certain structure, whereas Real all her book, comic yeah. books are like that. They're totally. all like well, that. We're very conditioned to be looking for a happy, satisfying ending. Yes. And I do teach my writers that it doesn't need to be happy, but it needs to be satisfying. Right. In some way, like, give right. me some takeaway. Yeah. Give me something that I can hold on to. I don't care if the character, like, even if the character died, if it was in a yeah interesting way, like, that'd be something. Yeah. Same thing when you do a project. You don't need it to be the happiest ending in the world. Yeah. But, like, take it to a conclusion that means something, I think, is yeah. what we're trying to say. And, and, again, like, failure is not failure. Always, you know, ending something correctly Right. It was a success of some kind. Well, his, yeah, that this, I'm not going to tell you how it ended, but it, it was satisfying in the sense that you realize that the whole book was about, you know, this process of going away from something to mm -hmm. be able to come back to something Ooh. with more personal growth. Than, well, that's than, perfect for our whole yeah, second no, I mean, act, that's what it, Yeah, know, Killing the Commander over. by Haruki Murakami is perfect. perfect book for perfect this. Perfect for this No, episode. I feel like almost like every week we should have a book that, oh my God, that yeah. you know, like we should do a book review. If to, to, we're a little nicer than we sometimes are. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, well, there's so many books that we read that actually, but, and also there's so many pieces of art that fit into what we do. Yeah. And I think that that's also, I mean, I think we do that naturally where we yeah. try to oh, for tie sure. in for sure. all of it. And I, I think that works for us and we, yeah. we, we, we're not going to second guess ourselves. No, <laughs> I mean, I think, I think their homework is read anything by Patti Smith. I oh, mean, I love that. Yes. Like, I just think she's incredibly inspiring as an yeah, artist. I'm, I'm actually going to literally go Yo, you and have to because it will, it will take away all right the bad flavor. Good. I'm mind. glad because I have it. Like, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. yeah. And so, well, let's leave you with that. Like, if you are left with a bad taste in your mouth, yeah. from the experience that you've had trying to do your next project or your second yeah. act or maybe even your first act yeah. left you with a bad taste in your mouth try to enlist like a palate cleanser like something tasty yeah. apples give yourself something tasty to kind of be able to transition into yeah. the next thing because you really don't want to come at it with this you want something to bitterness. inspire you definitely yeah you, you must you must you must and that's where the time comes in like give yeah, yourself, give yourself time some time to explore it and to be inspired and and enjoy to, and to come at things creatively Ooh. so that's it you guys we hope you enjoyed this episode join us next time yes when we get drunk on the creative possibilities bye cheers, cheers. Thank you.